Hello, my name is Zach Talks Hawks, and welcome back to the channel as we talk everything Seattle football here on Monday about the week that was for Seahawks football. And wow, do we have a crazy, crazy game to look over when Seattle goes into Detroit and puts up 48 points only to survive uh, a sh classic NFL shootout with the Detroit Lions, 48 to 35. What a game on Sunday that featured both offenses really going for it and uh, both defenses struggling at times. But my hope is that each Monday we can talk about the week that was for Seahawks football and we can uh, gather some insight over uh, what we got to see showcased on Sunday. And if you are curious over what my predictions are going into the uh, the, the Seahawks week, uh, take a look at my preseason score predictions, my, my preseason uh, what do you call that? Record prediction for the Seattle Seahawks. I'm I'm a little shaky, but uh, this stretch of games, I, I said earlier, and I'll say it again, it's very winnable for Seattle, and that, that gets me really encouraged uh, when it comes to uh, recapping some some content for you guys. And uh, first things first is we're we're just gonna briefly take a look here at the rundown and um, my takeaways from today's game that that we're we're gonna go over here in in just a short little while uh i told you last week on the channel i'll say it again geno smith is not the problem with the seattle seahawks it's not it's coaching and primarily the defense and uh we're gonna talk about kind of the main issue that i have seen over the last few weeks when it comes to these defensive issues as well as geno smith and just how he balled out today against the Detroit Lions. And we're also going to talk about what it means to look forward as a Seattle Seahawks fan. Yes, dare I say it, there's hope in the air for this franchise. I know a lot of people are begging for the tank, but oh man, uh, we're we're 2-2 two and two and chugging along. And I really felt like Seattle uh, should have won the Atlanta game, right? They... They had a dud uh, against the 49ers, but realistically, this team is good enough through the first quarter of the season or so to to be three and one. Instead, they're two and two, but we're going to talk about what it means to build hope and to build good habits with this squad moving forward. Now, now let's just take a look here at just some graphics for you. Uh, as as we go over some of our key points and and my first big takeaway was uh let gino cook and i have been pretty bullish about gino smith on this team if managed well and let me tell you they did it today man they ran the football as we're going to talk about rashad penny here in just a moment when we bring up the stats but both running backs Walker and Penny got a fair amount of, of plays in today. Penny, of course, having a, a, a huge game, able to showcase uh, what he can do. But speaking just from a philosophical point on the offense with this team, if you prioritize the run, and if you don't make Geno Smith throw for 55 times in a game, you're, you're going to do pretty well. Now, we can see what happens when Seattle walks out there thinking Geno Smith is Russell Wilson when you play a team like the 49ers and you lay an egg on offense. This game was the first game in which Seattle really put together two great halves of football. And it was mainly because Geno Smith played great, but he wasn't the answer as to why Seattle won. He played great. He was very effective, as you can see, through these first four games up here on the screen. Of course, Seattle fans are, are immediately going to uh, look at Russell Wilson and look at his stats. And I'm, I, I have to admit, through these first four games, it's been it's been kind of fun uh, to be able to sit back and go, "Ha, huh, look at look at that, look at that comparison." But um, as you can see here, Geno Smith leads the NFL in completion percentage, high percentage throws, getting the ball out quickly. 
looking for uh, a, a wide receiver that m might be five yards down the field, might be able to gain seven or eight on the play, and that's it. You're okay with that. That's how this offense should be ran. Uh, quick play action plays. We saw the tight ends get evolved in this game over and over again because the running game was so good. That's where Geno Smith thrives. You got to see on the broadcast how he takes command of the offense. And he's he's very smart. We saw it last year. He, he was able to audible out of some things and, and do some checks that gave me a lot of confidence that, hey, he's... <laughs> He, he very well won't be the reason why you win a game, but he can be the reason why you don't lose a game. And with this team that prioritizes the run on offense, that's what you need out of a quarterback. And, and we can see the stats speaking for themselves. He's a very efficient passer when he's not throwing 55 times a game. Um, he He's a very consistent thrower of the football. And again, this is a week in which we saw... Geno Smith complete a high percentage of his throws and and really do some some special things on the offensive side. Let's let's talk about some some offensive stats here on, on Seattle side, and then we'll bring this back up again, talking about how Seattle didn't play well on defense. But as you can see here, Geno only missed seven throws, and really only one was really ugly. He threw out of a sack that was called intentional grounding there was really nobody in the vicinity but the, the reality is that Gino really just needs to hold on to that ball but no interceptions for today two touchdowns ran as you can see very effectively uh had like 50 yards rushing 49 yards rushing and a touchdown um and he threw again for over 300 yards it's again against the line so we have to curb our enthusiasm here but very efficient very very efficient in fact uh both quarterbacks played exceptionally well because they're the defenses they were going against were just awful but the big mark on this team that needs to be talked about is the running game you had rashad penny running for over 150 yards you had gino running for 50 more kenneth walker had a nice healthy dose of running back two snaps today I think we're going to see more and more of him as the season goes along, but it's good to see him and his explosiveness really get into this offense. Uh, and of course, the Eskridge on uh, Dwayne Eskridge rather on the jet sweep, um, his his only run of the game. But it was good to see him involved a, a, a little bit, at least more integrated into the offense. But rushing is now a priority for this team offensively speaking and when that happens Geno Smith can throw in rhythm throw off the play action and take what the defense gives to him and we also saw there are a few opportunities where he can get rid of the ball deep down the field and see what happens he did that a couple times today and of course the beneficiary of those is Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf having monster games today uh but the tight ends getting involved Fant uh with a touchdown saw Fant a lot in the run game I saw a lot out of him that I really enjoyed today uh Kobe Parkinson uh, just kind of having a knack to get out there but Seattle, Seattle ran a lot of three tight end sets today and um, yeah, very, very good. Finally, right. Getting a, getting a QB that will throw to the tight ends. It's, it's crazy how that works. Uh, but I also want to bring up Rashad Penny and understanding that this guy is going to have a fantastic season if Seattle continues this way offensively. This is, this is the good habit that I want to talk about here. The key to success for this team has to be, has to be establishing the run every week and not relying on Geno Smith to win the game, but relying on Geno Smith to just do what he does, play consistent football, smart football, and the stats will speak for themselves. This team does not have to be ride or die with the quarterback. It can be built around the running game. Now, what goes with that is uh, the fact that, well, here in our rundown, we see that, unfortunately, if you're going to have a team that prioritizes the run, it's also supposed to prioritize good defensive play. 
we're not seeing that out of Seattle. And in fact, we're, we're seeing something, well, pretty, pretty awful out of this team. Bringing up the stats once again. Um, take a look at, at the tight end production here. Uh, we have Kennedy, uh, second string tight end, really getting 54 yards, uh, having that burst play of almost 30 uh, later in this game. And of course, TJ Hawkinson, he's, he's a monster, right? But so, so, so are the number of tight ends, right? I think of Kyle Pitts. I think of uh, guys that we're going to face in our divisions, like the George Kittles of the world later on in the season. Um, it has become very clear with this team. If you have a tight end that's alive and competent, Seattle doesn't match well against them defensively. Their, their linebacking play is just a little too slow to keep up. We got to see Kobe, Kobe Bryant um, match up against some tight ends. He got burnt a, a, a couple times today because he's he's not that big. Jamal Adams, not around. And so his replacement, although serviceable, just not a, just not really a, a, a thumper. And Quandre Diggs can only do so much being way back playing that, that robber corner, that robber safety look. See, I was in big trouble when it comes to defending tight end play. The trends over these first four games have spoken very clearly to the fact that they just don't have a lot of talent defensively uh, to hang with some of the more uh, physical tight ends in this league. And it's not going to get easier for this squad looking forward. Um, that's why Detroit's able to put up 45 today, in my, in my humble opinion, right? On the outside... Seattle yeah, did okay. Like they they hung around. They did their their bend don't break stance for a little while at, at some points this game. Like Detroit really had to work for it, and um, it, it compared to how Seattle really cruised down the field seemingly every drive, well really every drive because Michael Dixon didn't punt it on Sunday. Um, but it it is frustrating to to see the glaring flaw in this defense a big deal was made about how seattle moved from that 4-3 look to that 3-4 look and there are times where we have to sit back and wonder would this team be better at defending tight end play right getting getting that hit right off the line of scrimmage if they were still in that 3-4 look rather than or that 4-3 look rather four down linemen than having three guys down there on the line it's it is it's very frustrating because you, you have to have a cam chancellor a jamal adams that 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 big thumping guy over the middle that'll make a tight end think twice about just roaming free and last couple of weeks we've seen tight end play out of our opponents that far exceed the norm and see, I was really going to have to pick that up moving forward in, in these next few weeks on the schedule. But uh, I, it's not all bad, right? We're two and two. We, we won a game. And uh, this is this is great, right? I think so. I, I really do. I, I don't think that this team needs to just tank and, and throw it away. I think that this team is built to be competitive if that doesn't equate into a playoff spot you know i'm not gonna be heartbroken it's something we all should be expecting as playoff fans or as playoff fans we're fans of playoffs too but seahawks fans is that look we we have a standard we didn't get there last year probably not gonna get there this year but i think we might be a little bit closer than what people think uh like i said early in the show Seattle definitely could have won the game against Atlanta, and they could be sitting at a 3-1 record right now, beating the Falcons, beating the Broncos, and now beating, obviously, a Lion team that uh, has some weapons on offense but uh, really looked a lot better because our defense stinks and vice versa as well. This team is going to be sporty throughout this year. My expectations for this squad, as I shared in, in a previous video, is that if they hang around in games and you know by halftime what you're going to get out of them, then for the most part, I'll be satisfied with their season. 
However, with the play of Geno Smith and the prospect of Rashad Penny really being the man on this offense, sky's the limit, right? We have shown now to the league we can score 48 points in a game. Um, it's not going to happen every week, right? Uh, Tark Woolen had his first career pick six. That was exciting. Uh, so it wasn't all offensive output today. And, of course, the, the big storyline was the Lions not having a kicker. So uh, that definitely could have played into a greater factor. We could be sitting here today going, Seattle scored 48 points and they still lost uh, if Detroit wound up having a kicker. But the, the reality is, is that we can walk away from this week four matchup going, they did okay. Uh, they they put together a show pretty much what I and I think most educated fans thought was going to happen, right? Both of these defenses really struggle. They have explosive weapons on both sides, both Seattle and Detroit. And we got to see an old-fashioned shootout that um, was great to watch. Seattle built good habits in terms of prioritizing the run and not putting it all in Geno Smith's lap. And what resulted from that is Rashad Penning having a banner day and Geno Smith continuing his hot streak to begin this season. Ultimately, schematically, something's got to change on this defense to better suit uh, kind of the more physical uh, rowdy tight end play here that we see in the NFL now, but ultimately some good things to look forward to. If you're a Seahawk fan moving into next week, uh, go on the road, playing the saints excited for that matchup. I don't quite know what the quarterback play is going to look like out of new Orleans. So, uh, definitely some storylines to look forward to in the week, but until we meet again, come back on Tuesday. We got some NCAA 14 content here coming on the channel for you. But till we meet again, my name is Zach Talks Hawks, and uh, keep talking Seahawk football. And I'll be back to talk to you again soon. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see. And I will see you again real soon. Bye.